it's time for Orchard Skills. In an ever-changing world of customization, it's essential for your user settings to adapt. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be exploring the new feature in Orchard Core named Custom User Settings. Please stay with us and we'll get started. Welcome back. In order for us to get started, we'll need to clone the Orchard Skills Material Design Theme GitHub Repository. With your favorite browser, head over to github.com slash orchardskills slash orchardskills.orchardcore.materialdesigntheme. Click on the green code button. Click on Open with GitHub Desktop. Click on the Open GitHub Desktop.exe button and click on the Clone button. Okay, great. Let's launch Visual Studio and load the solution for the Orchard Skills Material Design theme. Let's go ahead and run the application. Click on the green play triangle button. Okay, let's enter our site name. Let's make sure we select the material design theme. Enter username, email, password, and password confirmation. And press the finish setup button. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and log in. Go up and select dashboard. Head down to content. Content definition, content types, and let's create a new type. And let's call this user profile. Hit the create button and let's save. Now let's head over to the Orchard Core documentation and search for custom user settings. And here it describes how to set up the custom user settings. And for here, when creating such a section, remember to disable creatable launchable, draftable, and securable metadata as they don't apply. So let's do that. So creatable, listable, draftable, and securable. Okay. So next we'll need to specify custom user settings in the stereotype. So let's do that and add custom user settings in the stereotype. Let's head down, add a field. And for the display name, we'll do first name. And let's select a text field for that and hit save. Let's add another field, last name. Go down and click on text field and hit save. Let's add another field and let's put the mobile. This will be a text field and hit save. And let's add one more and we'll call this avatar. And this will be a media field and click save. Okay, let's edit these fields for the first name. Let's make sure that that's required and let's add enter first name and hit save. Let's edit the last name, make it required and hit save. And for the mobile, let's make that required, enter mobile number. And for this, we should select phone here for the editor type, click save. And for the avatar, we won't make that required. Okay, great. Let's make sure we hit save there. And for the user profile display name, let's just call that profile. And let's hit save. Now let's go down to our security settings, go into users, and let's edit our user sales. And you notice here that now we have a profile page. So let's click on that. And we'll enter first name, last name, mobile, and let's select an avatar. Okay. And hit save. Now let's head back to Visual Studio and click on the materialdesign.recipe.json file here. And let's add the user profile content type here. And so that will be user profile, display name, profile, settings, content type settings, versionable true, stereotype, custom user settings, full text aspect settings, content type part definitions will be part name, user profile, name, user profile, settings, content type part settings, position zero. Okay, great. And now down in the content parts, we also want to add user profile settings, content part field definition record with a field name, text field name, first name, settings, content part field settings, display name, first name, position zero, text field settings, hint, enter first name required, field name, text field name, last name, settings, settings, content part field settings, display name, last name, position one, text field settings, hint, enter last name, required true, content 
index settings, then our field name, text field, name mobile, settings, content part, field settings, display name mobile, editor, tell, position two, and then text field settings, hint, enter mobile number, required true, context index settings. And then our last field, there's field name, media field, name avatar, settings, context part, field settings, display name, avatar, position three. Okay, great. Now let's add these custom settings to our blog post. So let's head down to the content dash blog post dot summary dot liquid file. And here I added two statements, assign user equal user, vertical bar user ID, vertical bar users by ID. And then we also assigned avatar path to user.properties.userprofile.userprofile.avatar.paths.first. And then down here, we're checking to make sure that the avatar path is not equal to nil. If so, we'll go ahead and display the avatar image. And then down further here, we display the first name and the last name. Okay, great. And now let's click on content dash blog post dot liquid file. In here, we're doing the exact same thing. We're assigning user equal to user, vertical bar, user underscore ID, vertical bar, users underscore IID underscore ID. And also we're assigning the avatar path equal to user dot properties dot user profile dot user profile dot avatar dot paths dot first. And if we scroll down here, we make sure that the avatar path is not equal to nil. If so, we'll go ahead and display the image. And then also down further here, we display the first name and last name right here. Okay, great. Okay, let's run the application. So let's select the blog theme and scroll down. And as you can see here, we have posted by, there's our avatar sales, which is done. And the name is John Doe. So let's go ahead and click on one of the blog posts here. And then you can see here, we also have posted by sales. We have our avatar, John Doe. Isn't that slick? We customized our user settings. Let's recap. We cloned the Orchard Skills GitHub Material Design theme repository. We created a custom content type with a first name, last name, mobile, and an avatar. We modified the recipe and added the custom content type. We modified our, our blog post liquid files and added the custom user settings. And finally, we ran the application and displayed the custom user settings in the blog post. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.